Hello, Mark the Cinemaniac here, welcoming you to another edition of Coming Soon. So I have a stack. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a quick little teaser preview. Of this ready? I have a stack <laughs> of stuff that has come in that I haven't talked about. I haven't done one of these in a while. So I'm gonna start with the freshest stuff that just came in, and we'll go through the rest. This is all stuff that I think will not be released until early July, at least. So some of this I'm not too far ahead of this curve on, and some of it is is pretty fresh. So just arrived in the mail from the fine folks at MVD. This, I, I didn't take this out of the package for those of you who thrill to the sign of things being torn asunder or, or shrink wrap crinkling or something like that. And if you look below the, in the description, yes, there's a text description below this video. If you look below, I will have all of the uh, Amazon buying links. If you buy, if you click on an Amazon link, little tip, in any of my videos, there is an Amazon link. I'm an Amazon affiliate. If you click on that and you wind up buying it, it doesn't cost you a penny more, but I get a little something for that and it keeps me in, in cool hats and t-shirts and uh, socks and shoes. So what we have here, as I was saying, in the uh, description below is all the information about release dates, street dates, companies, Amazon stuff. If you click on the Amazon link, it's the full description for, for what I'm talking about here. So from MVD, very excited about this. The uh, I'm sorry, from Unearthed Classics is Homework with Joan Collins. This was Joan Collins' entry into the 80s older woman, younger guy, they're playing with fire, private lesson sweepstakes, and uh, even every young man needs a teacher. Uh, homework follows Tommy, a young rock star who is also a virgin, as he tries to lose his virginity to local high school girls, a classmate's mother, <laughs> file under movies that wouldn't get made today. Uh, Joan Collins decides to make a man of him. The story unfolds through the promiscuous, funny, and sometimes touching life of the young high schooler by the... Okay. I don't want to say any more than that because it maybe it gives something away. Blu-ray special edition features interview with legendary producer Max Rosenberg. Oh, wow. So the man who was behind Amicus Films, the man who brought you the original Tales from the Crypt movie, Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, homework. Uh, promotional gallery and trailers. It's rated R. 185 aspect ratio, 89 minutes, 2.0 mono, and 2.0, uh, <laughs> where my mind goes. It says 2.0 DD stereo, and I'm like, oh, that's funny, double D stereo. No, it's Dolby Digital. The English language, English SDH subtitles, and English subtitles, it is a region A disc. Let me open it up, open up the, uh, as, as we know, I'm particular, so I try to open it up without taking the shrink wrap off. I just open the bottom. So this is a movie I've never seen. I remember the uh, the VHS cover, which which was this, and I greatly appreciate it when video releases just use the movie poster. You don't have to come up with something new because it usually looks cheesy and anachronistic. Just use the video poster, use the video box cover for nostalgia's sake, and uh, that's what Unearth does here. That's what MVD often does with their rewind collection and stuff. So I, uh, I appreciate that for nostalgia, and to me it's kind of collectability, like, I'm not gonna be able to afford nor have the wall space to have the original posters for all this stuff, but if I have it in this form, it's like, well, I can I can look at the poster that way. So we have the slip case, which slips to reveal the same artwork, uh, front and back, and we crack it open, and, uh, oh, interesting. Huh, very interesting. <laughs> it's, uh, I presume that that has something to do with the film, because I've never seen it, but that's just fairly simple release, but looking forward to this one a lot because it's a movie I've never seen. It's one of those movies that always kind of looked at me and winked from the video store shelf all those years ago, and uh, and just, uh, I never watched it. And uh, Okay, so this has nothing to do with anything, but uh, a, a good friend of mine at the, at the drive-in, the Mahoning Drive-In Theater in Lehigh, in Pennsylvania, where I work, uh, walked up to me the other day and said, I was out shopping and I found this for you, and it just had your name all over it. And it's a, it's a welcome back, Cotter. <laughs> Paperback novelization. Won't be reviewing that, but I will be reading that. So then we have another huge bundle from MVD. Let's see what we have. Oh boy. Again, read the description below to find out when these things come out. <clears throat> this is a big this is the biggest one of these I've done in a while. So from Synapse Films, Don May Jr. and Company comes from the slimy depths of the ocean. Nature explodes with savage fury, crocodile. Crocodile. I saw this years ago on videotape. I cannot imagine that this looks anything near as horrendous. I say the videotape look 
horrendous. It was a widescreen film. Yes, this is a 235 widescreen. So this is a thin band across your television. And that was a pan and scan tape. So it was just like, what am I looking at half the time? Uh, when Mother Nature rebels against humankind for defying her laws, she strikes back with unbelievable fury, creating the largest and most savage crocodile on Earth. So that's like Crocodile Savagery on Demand. That's very exciting. Uh, this killer croc classic, originally filmed in 78 as Crocodile Fangs, was released in slightly different versions all around the world during its theatrical run. Synapse is proud to present the Blu-ray world premiere of Crocodile in its original U.S. release version, uh, meticulously restored from the original 35mm English camera negative. We get, uh, for extras on this, we get a commentary with writer and film historian Lee Gambin, who just recently passed away. I was just listening, like literally before I pushed record just now, I was just listening to Lee Gambin's uh, moderated commentary on the Arrow Mute Witness disc. Uh, good guy, knew his stuff and sadly no longer with us. Video interview with original Crocodile, Fa Crocodile Fang's director, wow. Uh, Wan C. Lee, original theatrical trailer, deleted in alternate scenes. It is from 1979, 92 minutes color, 235 widescreen. This is a region ABC uh, Blu-ray, so this will play anywhere in the world. You don't need a special Blu-ray player to watch this in Botswana. And it is, uh, as I said, rated R. So let's uh, take off the shrink wrap, see if we have any goodies inside. For those of you who like the sound of crinkling. There's that. So I showed you the front and the back. It's funny, um, Synapse often will use these black cases and in my brain, the black case signifies 4K. So I, I saw this and I'm like, a crocodile in 4K? Are there 4Ks to pull out of that thing? Uh, and what we basically have here is the disc, which is, yes, not a naked woman. Okay, we have the disc and a thick Synapse catalog, which they usually tuck in there with all of their releases. So uh, looking forward to seeing that for the first time in a long time. That will be, Kind of like seeing it for the first time, honestly. And then we have, oh boy, they'll get yours in the end. The MVD Rewind Collection 4K Laser Vision Collection presents in 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, Ghoulies 2. Yes, it's the one with the ghoulies in the toilet. I actually used to have a poster for this. I may still. A cousin of mine uh, fetched from the video store back when this was a new release, a full-size, like, theatrical one-sheet quality uh, video store poster for Ghoulies 2. So um, I've not watched these yet. I actually have still yet to review the previous 4K edition of Ghoulies that was released by MVD. They also have this out on Blu-ray, and now they've upgraded so you can get the first two Ghoulies movies on 4K. The demonic... Toilet-dwelling goblins are back, stowed away in Satan's Den, the traveling house of horror operated by carnival workers Larry and Uncle Ned. The ghoulies merrily devour the sideshow attraction's patrons until Larry realizes his house of horror is for real and tries to flee the scene. Deliciously outrageous special effects and over-the-top antics ratchet up the horrific fun. Extras, oh boy, get comfortable. 4K special features, it's a 2024 4K restoration, 16-bit scan of the original camera negative of the film presented in its original 185 aspect ratio in Dolby Vision and HDR. So if you have a TV and a player that can handle that, this will look better than probably anyone ever intended Ghoulies 2 to look. Includes the 90-minute theatrical PG-13 cut and the restored 91-minute unrated extended cut in of the film, both presented in 4K. Optional English subtitles, 2.0 stereo, DTS HD audio introduction by screenwriter Dennis Paoli is a minute and 15 seconds. Original theatrical tra trailer is a minute 23. Collectible 4K laser vision mini poster, which we'll show you, and reversible artwork, the Blu-ray, features an HD presentation of the theatrical version in 185, 2K scan of the inner positive overseen by MGM, uh, that's uh, 185 aspect ratio, uh, LPCM 2.0 stereo, optional English, French, and Spanish subtitles, introduction by the screenwriter, more toilets, more terror, the making of Ghoulies 2, which is 16 minutes, under a magic moon interview with Dennis Paoli, 33 minutes, deleted scenes, uh, three minutes, photo gallery, and theatrical trailer. This is Region A, so this is only going to play in America. I think Region A is America and Canada. That's how it used to be for um, for DVD. Region 1 was most of this continent, let's say, was, was Region 1. So let's open her up. And again, as I'm particular, you get to look at the top of my hair. Or just, you know, just be impressed by the cannonball hat. Cannonball, not cannibal hat. So we take the slip case, and it flips to reveal more or less the same thing. 
And uh, boy, classic poster. See, this is what I was saying before. The black case, it says the 4K HD. I'm just the black case makes me think it's gonna be a 4K disc. So we crack it open and true to form with MVD, we get this, this the disc surface looks like the old uh, 20th Century Fox Fox Home Video inner, inner label for a laser disc, basically. And we get the other side and the Blu-ray version looks like the face label on a DVD. And then I dropped a thing, so please just admire the room for a moment. Swear to God, it's the chair. And then we get the little mini poster. I love that they do this. It looks like the cover of an old CED. CED being what existed before Laserdisc. There were these big plastic things that you would have the cover art on there. A lot of times it was original cover art, and a lot of times they had this circular motif to it. You would slide that into your player, and inside was a basically a video record that there'd be like essentially a needle inside this player, and it would play this video record. From what I've heard, the quality was like VHS quality somewhere, a little above or below VHS, either, either VHS or less actually. You would slip that in and you would slip the thing back out and the record would play inside and then when you were done, you would slip it in and the record would go back inside the case. Anyway, Ghoulies 2 on Blu-ray. Uh, let's see, also from Unearthed Classics who was giving us homework. It's funny, so um, I got a package in the mail and when I get these packages, they come with a, like a shipping list and the, the last bundle of discs I have that I'm gonna talk about in a second, had uh, homework listed and there was no homework in the package. So I contacted my friend uh, Derek at MVD who helps me uh, get all these review things to talk to you about. And I said, you know, I never thought I would be saying this to anybody, but you forgot to give me homework. And uh, <laughs> true to form, it, uh, it came and it actually has a little sticker that says from Derek. So Derek did literally give me homework and it will be the one time I asked for homework and it'll be the one time I thank somebody for giving me homework. So. We have from Unearthed Classics, The Giver. The Giver? The Giver. Not MacGyver. I've heard of this movie, but I've never seen it. Sci 90 sci-fi thing. This is 4K Ultra HD. Oh, wow. 4K Ultra HD and a Blu-ray and a CD soundtrack. And it's a limiters collector's edition. Part human, part alien, part pure superpower. The Giver. Or Giver. Once I watch it, I'll know. Uh, wow, this is tiny text on the back of this. Watch as I squint. Uh, in this thrill minute alien adventure, Sean Barker, Jack Armstrong, is a college student who discovers the Giver, or Giver, an alien mechanical device that merges with his body, turning him into a super-powered cyborg fighting machine. I think you've sold a copy to me already. The device belongs to, I was going to say Cheerios, Kronos, an evil corporation run by human mutants that metamorphosize into monstrous soldiers called Zoonoids. How early 90s is this? Kronos boldly wants the Giver or Giver back and sends a gang of Zoonoids, Zonoids, tiny, tiny font, uh, to kidnap Sean's girlfriend, Mizuki, Vivian Wu. Sues, uh, Sean re rescues Mizuki with the help of Max Reed, Mark Hamill. I thought Mark Hamill had something to do with this. A CIA agent determined to keep the device from falling into the hands of Kronos. However, the rescue attempt, uh, I'm not going to say anymore because they, uh, they might give something away. So, three disc, three disc, 4K UHD limited collector's edition contents. Disc one is the feature on 4K Ultra HD and uh, Ultra HD Blu ray. It's new 4K restoration of the original R rated 35mm camera negative by Unearthed Films presented in its original 185 aspect ratio, ratio in HDR. New commentary with directors Screaming Mad George. Oh, he was a well known effects guy in that day. Uh, screaming about George and Steve Wang, moderated by Dom O'Brien, the author of Budget Biomorphs, The Making of the Giver Films. New commentary with actor SFX artist Evil Ted Smith and Creature Shop Lab Tech miniature supervisor Wyatt Weed. Direct uh, yeah. Disc 2 is this, the feature in just a Blu-ray. Same commentary, uh, same commentaries. Uh, new interview with producer Brian Usna. Oh, Brian Usna had something to do with this. Brian Usna did Society, and he did the Reanimator films. Worked with Stuart Gordon a lot. Um, new introduction with new interview with director Screaming Mad George. New suit tests commentary by co-director Screaming Mad George and Steve Wang. Uh, Wong Wang, tiny font. Uh, new outtakes with commentary by director Screaming Mad George and Steve Wang. New gag reel with commentary by co-directors. I say new. It's not a new gag reel. It's a new special feature. New commentary. New. Pause. Gag reel commentary by co-director Screaming Mad George and Steve Wang. New. Pause. Production and artwork gallery, alternate title sequence, trailers. Disc three is the soundtrack on a, co a compact disc. A collector's booklet. 
This is region one, region A. So this is something, again, that you in America it will work if you live in another country. A lot of people, a lot of film fans, a lot of Blu-ray savvy folks have the all region players. There are places online you can go to buy them. They're modified, so they will just play anything you put into them, and you can just buy from anywhere in the world. So if you live outside the U.S. and you have an all-region player, hey, this exists now, too. So if you slide the slipcase off, you get, ooh, different artwork. And then, this is a hefty, this is a hefty package. You get, there's a disc there, two more discs, so it's 4K Blu-ray CD. And then you get the, I recognize this as the cover, I think. You get the collector's booklet, which is not too thick. It is, let's see, like four or five pages. You get some, some text and some artwork there, so that's cool. So that's the giver, or the giver, which I've never seen. I look forward to watching. Now the stuff that's been sitting here a little bit longer. From Film Masters, I'm not gonna go on and on about Film Masters. I love Film Masters. Film Masters takes movies that have never had any respect and gives them respect comes a film that has probably had very little respect in its life, The Crippled Masters. This is an infamous movie, Hong Kong uh, martial arts movie, that stars disabled people as the martial artists. I believe it's a man with no legs and a man with no arms, maybe also with no legs, I I'm not sure. But it's, uh, you wanna talk about exploitation? Let's talk about some exploitation. It uh, stars Frankie Shum and Jackie Khan, probably not either of their real names. Newly restored from the original 35 millimeter archival elements, this is Two Crippled Brothers, One Indestructible Force. Originally debuting in 1979, The Crippled Masters would later be released in the United States in 1982. Directed by Joe Law, the film tells the story of two martial artists, one without arms and the other without legs, who overcome physical disabilities to become skilled fighters. It really is amazing to see what they do in this film. They learn special techniques as they seek revenge against the villainous master who crippled them both. Oh yeah, this is the movie that starts with these guys having those appendages and seeing them brutally removed from them. Um, not not actually done in the film like they have they were already missing those things but it's it's done uh, special effects wise or maybe not so special effect known for invent its inventive fight scenes this grindhouse era cult classic martial arts film was sourced from the collection of author and film curator jo jack stevenson in copenhagen denmark where it was scanned in 2k before an extensive restoration was done bonus features film masters always takes these movies that usually they usually have had a release before usually they were considered public domain usually they didn't look very good and they give you a version that you never thought you would get it's it's a version that should make everybody else who has a copy just throw it away Bonus features, full commentary track by Will Sloan and Justin DeClue of the Important Cinema Club. Uh, those are great guys and, and fun guys. Uh, they run a company called Gold Ninja Video, and if you are into martial arts films and weird, obscure Canadian films, check out Gold Ninja Video. They do extremely limited runs. Uh, they do their own scanning and restoration, their own supplements, extremely limited runs of like 800 copies, and then, then they're gone, but they're, they do some great stuff. Uh, Kings of Kung Fu, Releasing the Legends, a documentary from Ballyhoo Motion Pictures. Those are always great. Original 1982 trailer and a 2024 recut trailer using restored film elements. Liner notes and a full color booklet by Lawrence Carter Long, which we'll look at. Archival collection of martial arts film trailers, courtesy of Something Weird. Ooh, I love that Film Masters is working with Something Weird now. Uh, bonus Mandarin language track for The Crippled Masters. Original raw scan of The Crippled Masters feature film. Wow. Presented in HD, The Crippled Masters before and after restoration. I'm a fan. I'm a fascinated by film restoration. So that's really cool. It is uh, 91 minutes, not rated color, 235 aspect ratio, closed caption. And this is region A, B, and C, which again means anywhere in the world you pop this in. If you live in, in Copenhagen, you can pop this disc in and uh, it'll play with no problems, no remote hacks. No special players, anything like that. It's just uh, region free. Buy it anywhere in the world, which means they can sell it anywhere in the world, which is good for them. So I showed you the cover. We crack it open <clears throat> and we get, basically it's just the same cover art here and there. Single disc release because it's just one movie. And wow, this booklet is hefty. And I always say, you know, sometimes booklets in the past were kind of frivolous because it's like there's tons of supplements and the booklet is just like, okay, it's a chapter index or something like that. But lately, Film Masters and Radiance and some other companies and Arrow put booklets in that are like really well-written pieces about the films and stills that you don't see anywhere else. And it's, it's really cool. So this is, see how thick that is? This is um, loaded with text and poster images and the photos are uh, photos that come from the scan of the movie, so they look good. And it is forward by Philip Elliott Hopkins and The Crippled Masters by Lawrence Carter Long. And uh, that's The Crippled Masters. Coming soon, 
look in the description below as to when. This is from Whole Grain Pictures. I have one release from Whole Grain Pictures that I still need to finish. I'm sorry, Whole Grain. I'll get to that review really soon. This is uh, Voit Song Journey from the Fall, Vietnam 1975, the untold story of their fight for freedom. This is completely new to me. Inspired by the true stories of Vietnamese refugees. Uh, April 30th... <clears throat> I get choked up when I talk about it any, any date in April. April 30th, 1975 marked the end of Vietnam's two-decade civil war and the start of the exodus of hundreds to thousands of refugees despite his alliance to the toppled South Vietnamese government. Long Nguyen, uh, who plays himself, uh, decides to remain in Vietnam imprisoned by a communist, uh, in a communist re-education camp. He urges his family to make the escape to by boat without him. His wife Mai, by, perpetrated by Diem Lien, son Lai, uh, Nguyen, Thai Nguyen, and brother uh, Ba Khoi, Q China, hopefully I did those names justice, then embark on the arduous ocean voyage in the hope of reaching the U.S. in freedom. That's insane. People on a boat from uh, Vietnam to America. Journey from the Fall premiered as the official selection at the 2006 Sundance Film Festival and went on to win 16 international awards. Critics called it a powerful and unforgettable and movingly rendered. Uh, unavailable for over a decade, Whole Grain Pictures is proud to present the first major Vietnam War movie from the refugee perspective. This sounds really good. Uh, special features, original sound... Wow, original soundtrack, bonus CD, full-length video comment video commentary with cast and crew, alternate scenes, B-roll and on-set footage, cast and crew interviews, original trailer and TV spots, extensive historical testimonies and cultural notes. Wow, this sounds really interesting. Um, this is a region A, B, and C disc. So once again, this will this will play in Vietnam. Um, and <laughs> I love how they do this. It's a 185 aspect ratio. Audio is Vietnamese 5.1, Vietnamese 2.0, Spanish 5.1, English subtitles, English SDH subtitles, Spanish subtitles, and it is 100. Wow, 135 minutes. I love how they do this. It's called Whole Grain Pictures, and if you can see this, I've shown before. It looks like nutritional information is how they lay out the uh, the specs on the disc. So I think that's fab. That's fabulous. So. Let me see if I can find purchase to get into this thing. I don't think Whole Grain makes the um, the innards of their discs terribly ornate. Wow. Perhaps they want the ability to get into this disc to be as arduous as the journey from Vietnam to America in a boat. <laughs> I can't get purchase. I can't get purchase. Just enjoy the sound of the air conditioner. Well, take it as read that there's two discs in there. We, we gotta move on, we gotta move on. So I got packages from Severin Films the other day. Love Severin Films, love what they've done. I just got a review copy and I will talk about that. I think I posted it separately, uh, unboxing video. A review copy of their uh, The Game of Clones Volume 1, their Bruce Lee. They do phenomenal box sets, phenomenal releases, but it's always been a company that I really couldn't get anything from for review, but that seems to have changed because they sent me this package. We have two films very similar. We have Peter Cushing and Nigel Stock in Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes. This is all surviving episodes of the BBC TV series. Very excited. Love uh, Sherlock Holmes, I, I, I like fine. Love Peter Cushing. Um, this is, uh, let's see, having first portrayed the legendary detective in the Hammer film, in, for Hammer Films in 1959, Cushing enthusiastically returned to the role of Sherlock Holmes for its 1968 British BBC television series. Uh, though most of the shows were forever lost, these six surviving episodes, including the two-part The Hound of the Baskervilles, adapted by award-winning playwright Hugh Leonard, showcase Cushing at his elementary best with guest stars that include Madge Ryan from Clockwork Orange, Anne Bell from The Witches, Nick Tate from Space 1999, and Gary Raymond, Jason and the Argonauts. This definitive presentation of Sherlock Holmes, which also includes the classic cases of Study in Scarlet, The Blue Carbuncle, makes me think of Fester, Bester, Tester, and Carbuncle from Mad Magazine. Uh, the Bosco Valley Mystery and the Sign of Four is now restored from BBC Tape Protection Masters. Special features, uh, audio commentaries for all episodes, including Kim Newman, um, just tells what he has done, uh, and uh, David Stewart Davies. <clears throat> all episodes available with the BBC Countdown Clock, which is always wild to be able to see that. Illustrated Peter Cushing audio interview with David Stewart Davies. Missing episode clips with optional commentary by Jonathan Rigby. And this is a Region A release. It is 1080p resolution 133 square because that's what TV was for most of its life. And uh, English mono audio. Whole total running time is, is 308 minutes. Very excited to see this. I don't know anything about this <clears throat> in terms of what we're getting. 
So I don't know if these were shot on video. I'm presuming these were studio bound mostly and shot on videotape. And if they went outside, they switched to film. That's how BBC British TV in general worked for the longest time. But I'm very curious to see Peter Cushing on videotape, if that's the case, or, or on film. So you crack it open and it's not too fancy, but it's really nicely done. It is just uh, two discs right there. So that is uh, coming soon from Synapse, but also very cool how they did this. Coming soon from Synapse is Christopher Lee in Sherlock Holmes and the Deadly Necklace, directed by Terrence Fisher. So you get Chris Cushing and Lee, Dracula and Van Helsing, Frankenstein and his monster, dueling Sherlock Holmes. Very cool that they did this. Very cool that they <clears throat> put them out, I believe, on the same day. Uh, first authorized U.S. disc release of Lee's only movie performance as Holmes. He played Mycroft Holmes in, um, was it The 7% Solution? One of those films. Uh, shortly after the hit collaboration, The Hound of the Baskervilles, Christopher Lee and director Terrence Fisher returned to Holmesiana for Lee's sole feature film portraying the world's greatest detective. I thought this was going to be the case, too. Shot in Berlin with Hammer regular Thorley Walters as Dr. Watson. Perfect casting. Lee considered it to be one of the best things I've ever done because I tried to play Holmes really as he was written as a very intolerant, argumentative, difficult man. That quote is so Christopher Lee. Sent a burger. Wow. When Women Had Tales and Ivan Desney, The Marriage of Marie and Braun, co-star in this 1962 West German, French, Italian, that was very common back then, co-production produced by Arthur Brauner from of Vampiros Lesbos from a screenplay by Kurt Siodmak, who did The Wolfman, based on Doyle's Valley of Fear, now scanned in 2K from the original German negative. Special features are audio commentary with film writers Kim Newman and Barry Forshaw, who are great. And <clears throat> I get choked up when I talk about Kim Newman. <clears throat> I mean, seriously, anytime Kim Newman, uh, anytime there's a British release, Kim Newman feels like the go-to guy, but he knows so much. He lives there. He's from there. He's really good. Uh, Tony Dalton interviews Terrence Fisher. Tony Dalton on Terrence Fisher and the trailer. This is, once again, an all-region Blu-ray. So if you're in England or you're in Germany or France or any of the co-producing countries, you can import this disc and pop it right in your player. No muss, no fuss. It is 86 minutes, black and white, and it is uh, in English. Audio is English or German mono. So for those of you who like the sound of crackling, little gift. Boy, the mess on the floor right now. And very simple, nothing fancy. It's basically just the cover on the disc. So looking forward to watching those. I'll probably, those are probably at really like the top of my pile. Here's a film that I've seen before. I have no recollection of. I might have fallen asleep while I was watching it, which has nothing to do with the quality of the film, more with the quality of how much sleep I normally get. A film by Dick Maas, Amsterdam. This is from Blue Underground. This is a new Blu-ray edition for Blue Underground. They had previously released this on DVD. The Danger Lies Just Below the Surface. Uh, sure, well, let's read the back. Why not? We've been, we're in this for a half hour. Let's go for the full 45. Down in the murky depths of Amsterdam's famous canals lurks a murderous predator. Excellent. It's probably not an alligator. Surfacing at night, he kills, it sounds like it could be, he kills at random and disappears without a trace. As the bodies begin to pile up and the mass hysteria envelops the city, Detective Eric Visser is assigned to pursue the investigation with only the escalating number of victims to go on. Visser pursues this quarry with a vengeance. Query? Quarry. And unaware that his beautiful new girlfriend may be the mysterious killer's next victim. Oops. Um, this is uh, Herb Stapel, The Lift, and Monique Van de Ven, Turkish Delight star in this pulse-pounding thriller, written and directed by Dick Moss, who did Silent Witness, uh, highlighted by an explosive speedboat chase through the city's narrow canals. That's what I kind of remember about it. Long unavailable on U.S. home video, Blue Underground proudly presents Amsterdam in a brand new 2K restoration from the original negative, approved by the director. So, video, it's uh, 1988, 113 minutes, 1080p HD, 185 widescreen. It is an all-region disc, once again, so you can watch it in Amsterdam. Audio is Dutch 5.1, Dutch and English 2.0, French Dolby Digital, has English subtitles, English SDH subtitles, and Spanish subtitles. Extras, audio commentary with writer-director Dick Moss and director Hans von Dongen. Uh, Making of Amsterdam, Tales from the Canal, interview with star Herb Staple. Damned stunt work, interview with stunt coordinator Dickie Bear, Beer. Sorry, Dickie Beer. It's Dutch trailer, U.S. trailer, Lois Lane music video for Amsterdam, directed by Dick Moss, poster in still gallery, and uh, it is rated R. That is a heck of a package. Uh, I don't know if there are any new extras on this or if this is really just an upgrade 
from Blue Underground uh, to the DVD, porting over. My guess is that's probably porting over everything that was on the DVD. And we take off the wrapper, and oh, this is cool. So you get the cover, and then you get an alternate cover, which might that might have been the DVD cover. That looks very familiar. And then if you take the disc out, you get, I like it when they do this, the clear case, something cool behind that image from the film, and uh, chapter titles. Amsterdam coming soon from Eureka Entertainment. Eureka Entertainment, longtime British company. British? Australian. British? Australian? Overseas company that uh, was didn't used to release anything here. Now they hooked up with MVD and they're re releasing their stuff in Region 1, which is very exciting. A lot of martial arts stuff. So we have a film I'd never heard of until this release. To win this fight, he'll need a miracle. The Miracle Fighters. It's uh, Yen Wu Ping's magical... Mar oh, Yen Wu Ping, who... Mostly known for people here because he was the uh, martial arts stunt coordinator, choreographer for The Matrix and Charlie's Angels and other stuff here. But he was a longtime uh, guy who did that in Hong Kong. So it's his magical mar martial arts fantasy, The Miracle Fighters. Uh, the Miracle Fighters is a comedic tale of Taoist magical Taoist magic directed by the martial arts maestro behind Drunken Master, The Magnificent Butcher, and Iron Monkey, the legendary Yen Wu Ping. During the, I'm not going to read all this. It's it's a martial arts fantasy, um, made in the same mold as its contemporaries' encounters of the spooky kind in the Dead and the Deadly. This riotous kung fu fantasy was followed by a number of equally entertaining thematic sequels. That was a big thing in Hong Kong in the 80s and 90s. Is cranking out just endless sequels to movies. Um, followed by a number of uh, sequels, including Taoism Drunkard, ooh, which I've heard of, and The Young Taoism Fighter. Eureka Classics is proud to present the Miracle Fighters on Blu-ray from a brand new 2K restoration. Let me tell you what's on the specials on this. Let me read from the specials menu. Limited edition O-Card slipcase featuring new artwork by Dar Darren Wheeling. 1080p HD presentation on Blu-ray of the original Hong Kong theatrical cut from a brand new 2K restoration. Original Cantonese mono audio and hip op hypnotic. It's running too long. Uh, no AC in this room. An optional classic English dub, optional English subtitles newly translated for release. Brand new audio commentary by East Asian film expert Frank Jang, New York Asian Film Festival. Frank Jang is great. He's on most Asian film releases, but the man knows his stuff. Uh, brand new audio commentary by action cinema experts Mike Leader and Arnie Van Emma. They are increasingly on a lot of these releases, and they're great. They know their stuff. Action Master, an interview with Yan Wu Ping. Archival interview by Frederick M. Boisin. And at the service of the great magician... Yeah. I'll be wrapping this up soon. <laughs> at the service of the great magician, an interview with Fish Fong... The Shakespeare of Yen Wu Ping interview with John Krang, Reversible Sleeve featuring original poster artwork, Stills Gallery trailer, plus a limited edition collector's booklet featuring new writing on the film by critic James Oliver. The Miracle Fighters is from 1982, Hong Kong, 100 minutes, 2.5 original aspect ratio, and it, this is a region A, so this is just for the America. I would say the Americas, but America. Oh, they, they got me. Oh, they fooled me. So, slip case, slips to reveal the same artwork, and the same thing on the back. Cracker open, and we get a little of this, a little of that. Take the disc off, and we see the reversible cover, cool, with the original poster art, which is nice. And as I say when I do these, I'm the kind of guy that will reverse that cover so that the slip case will show the new art, and when I pull it out, hey, look, it's different art. We get the booklet here, which is uh, filled with, I thought that was a naked photo for a second. Oh, wow, cool. Well, poster art filled with uh, photos, scans from the film, text, very groovy, and uh, really nice release. Eureka has uh, has just consistently impressed me with what they've put out. Even if I haven't loved everything they've put out, the packaging and the context they give for the movie in the supplements makes it a worthwhile experience. We also have, this is very exciting to me, from Eureka, Sonny Chiba, Beast Fighter. So Sonny Chiba made this trio of films. He did Karate uh, Bullfighter, yes he did, Karate Bear Fighter, bear and a bull, and one called Karate for Life. Now, apparently Karate for Life does not fit into the theme of fighting beasts, so for some reason, unfortunately, it's not on this set. But even without that, I gotta say, I mean, if you can see the photos, it's Sonny Chiba fighting animals with karate. Now, there's a picture on the back of this, which I don't know if we can see here. Maybe we can. That is Sonny Chiba fly giving a, a a bear a flying kick in the face now personally that's what i would have put on the cover because if, if you're selling things based on a cover if you're selling things to me based on a cover uh sunny chiba uh, flying kicking a bear in the face uh, will do that not if it's a real bear i want it to clearly be a guy in a bear suit i don't want it, i don't want anybody using kung fu on animals but if it's fake animals 
Boy, howdy. Um, again, not going to read the entire back because there's a lot of text here. The mighty Sonny Chiba, bodyguard uh, of Kiba in The Street Fighter. We know Sonny Chiba. Uh, stars in two spectacular martial arts movies based upon the real life of Matsusatsu Mas Oyama, the fabled bull-slaying karate master who trained none other than Chiba himself. Wow. Uh, directed by Kazuka Yamakachi... Yamaguchi, sorry, Sister Street Fighter, Karate Bullfighter, and Karate Bear Fighter were adapted from the popular manga series Karate Baka Ichadi, sorry, totally mangling all of these names, uh, by Iki Kajuara, sorry, which ran from 1971 to 77 and chronicled the life and legend of Masoyama. Eureka Classics is proud to present both films of the first time on Blu-ray from brand new restorations from the original film elements by Toei. I'm, I'm learning as I see more and more Chiba films that he did a lot of stuff based on manga. Um, limited edition O card. This is special features. Limited only about eleven more discs to go here. Uh, limited edition O card slipcase features new artwork by JJ Harrison, 1080p presentations of both films across two Blu-ray discs from new restorations of the original film elements by Toei. I already said that. Yeah, in, original Japanese mono audio, optional English dubbed audio for Karate Bullfighter. And you really want to hear in English what he has to say to the bull before he fights it. Optional English subtitles, brand new feature length audio commentaries on both films by action cinema experts Mike Leader and Arnie Venema. See, there they are again. Uh, in Search of the Ultimate Truth, brand new video essay by Jonathan Clemens, author of A Brief History of Martial Arts, uh, alternate champion of death opening credits, original theatrical trailer, TV spot, plus a limited edition collector's booklet featuring new writing by film scholar Eddie Falvey. This is from 1975. One, oh, they're both from, yeah, they're both from 75. Uh, so audiences in Japan got both Karate Bullfighter and Karate Bear Fighter in the same year. Those lucky sons of mine. Um, 176 minutes total between the two, 235 aspect ratios, and it is region A. So once again, this is just for America and Canada. So the slip case, what does it do? Slips, oh, to reveal a different cover. <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on, come on. Who wouldn't want that as a black, as like a, a felt black light poster? I think that would look great in it. That would, I mean, again, I'm not, I, I'm in no way pro bullfighting or pro karate or, or, or jujitsu or, or kenpo against bulls. But I mean, that's, that's kind of a, that's kind of a great image. So, uh, that's the cover. That's the back. We crack it open and we get, we get to sanitize. This is what it would be now. Like that, when Bangkok Dangerous came out and Nicolas Cage, it was a picture of him with a gun, holding the gun, looking badass and a shooting happened. And they were like, ah, I can't have a gun on the poster. And they took it out. So it's Nicolas Cage literally just looking like this on the cover of a poster. That's kind of what that would be. If suddenly there was a, some bull, Peter, Peter got involved, and it would just be that. It's, it's basically the image from the front with minus minus the bullet. You can't see that. Uh, then we have <laughs> then we have the other one. Uh, so nice little images there. That is Chiba looking looking like he's ready to beat up an animal. And we take these out carefully because I know I'm going to keep this one. And the uh, reversible cover, it <laughs> the reversible cover again. Somebody, if somebody hasn't made a T-shirt out of that, they are. They are doing society a disservice. And then we have the, uh, the booklet, which is uh, cool, filled with photos, filled with text. Very nice. Beast Fighter. I haven't, I've seen these movies, and I thought these movies were a heck of a lot of fun. And before, I will review them, but in advance of that review, I'm going to say, you probably want to get that. So, uh, now we have the last two, swear to God. From Radiance Films who I always say with Radiance, I don't love everything they put out, but I absolutely love that they're putting them out. They are, to me, on the level with Criteria, and they're taking tons of films that have never seen video release or certainly not disc release in the U.S. and giving them just really classy, elegant presentations. Sympathy for the Underdog. I know nothing about this film, so let's, let's, let's read it and uh, find out. This is a world Blu-ray premiere, so that's even cooler. Uh, and and, and um, Radiance is a British company, so sometimes their things are region A and B. Sometimes they'll release titles that they've only licensed that they somebody else has a license for in the U.S. So if you go to the Radiance website and, and hook up with Radiance, if you're all region, there's a lot of Radiance stuff I'm never going to talk about because it just it doesn't come out here unless I choose to buy and import it. Um, returning from a 10-year prison sentence, former gang leader Gunji Koji Tsurata from Big Time Gambling Boss, which was a fine film, um, finds that his turf has been taken over by his former enemy, now a large crime syndicate looking for new opportunities. He gathers his old crew and heads for the island of Okinawa. This sounds like a fun Japanese gangster movie. 
beginning uh, Kinji Fukusaku's streak of 1970s Yakuza movie masterpieces, Sympathy for the Underdog is a key film in the development of this director's unique style and themes. It features an audio commentary by Nathan Stewart, interview with Oliver Haducci, visual essay by Aaron Garau, trailer and booklet, reversible sleeve, limited edition of 3,000 copies. I always point out that this little thing, if you ever look at these photos online or when I hold them up and you're like, you can't even, why do they design a cover where you can't even read the whole thing? It's, it's inspired by the Japanese obi strips that would come in CDs and LPs and things like that. It slides out of the cover if you choose to take it out. It's just, a, it's like a little in, additional information and if you take it out, it's just, it's just imagery. Uh, this is a region A and B disc. So this will play in England or in the US and Canada. And let's see what it looks like on the inside. It's 2.35 widescreen, which tended sort of to be the, I find to be sort of the standard for Japan. A lot of, or at least for a certain era, a lot of Japanese stuff was always really wide. 93 minutes color, Japanese language, 2.35, as I said, mono, Dolby audio, and we crack it open. And their disc surfaces are usually nothing to write home about, but you take it out and really cool original poster art there. And uh, again, the booklets always look great. Very cool booklet with uh, cast and crew list. Contents, uh, Sympathy for the Underdog, A History of Consideration by Bastian Marison, and a review of Sympathy for the Underdog, 1971 by Tetsuo Ijima, and transfer notes and credits, and it's just filled with text and images uh, gleaned from the new transfer. So, last disc. Sorry this has run so long. I just haven't done this in a while. I like to blab, and I like these that are freeform, and I don't feel like I have any time constraints. We have Bandits of Orgo Solo, a film by Vittorio De Seta, so an Italian film. Um, I find that Radiance kind of tends to go back and forth between a lot of Japanese and a lot of Italian stuff, which are two cultures, uh, film cultures that I love. This is a U.S. Blu-ray premiere, and it is a Sardinian peasant is suspected of murder following an encounter with bandits. In order to survive, he has no option but to turn to banditry himself. Admired by Scorsese and Pasolini, Vittorio De Seta received acclaim for his first feature, which uh, continues in the traditions of Visconti and De Sica with his own style and rhythms. De Seta musters just as much power as the earlier masters. There is a new interview with director of photography Luciano Tavoli and curator Ishin I apologize. I should just do a blanket apology before I even start talking. Uh, the uh, curator Ishin Koshbat, booklet with new writing by Roberto Curti, reversible sleeve, limited edition of 2,000 copies, and it is a Blu-ray disc that is region A, B, and C. So this disc will play anywhere in the world. Uh, you could watch this in Italy. You could watch this in Sardinia. It is uh, 1961, 97 minutes, black and white, Italian language, 133 square, mono and let's for one last time listen to the sound of crinkles i could edit these but you know it's more time spent together. and by the way if you've made it this far congratulations i don't have a prize for you but uh i absolutely legitimately do appreciate it so uh, we crack it open and once again not an interesting thing to look at on the disc but uh, the discs are for playing not for uh, ogling then we get uh, what looks like the original poster art. Very cool. We get a, a sad looking boy there. And we open it up and uh, uh, sad looking man, sad looking boy. Nice, nice, nice thickness there. And it is uh, contents, cast and crew, an anthropologist with the voice of a poet by Roberto Curti and transfer notes and credits. And again, it's photos from the film scan and uh, text. So that's all, I'll stop. That's all. Wow, I've never done one this long before. My apologies, or you're welcome, depending. Again, if you're curious about any of these, all the text below this has the imagery, not the imagery, has the information as to what the street dates are, which company is putting it out, uh, year, film and year, and uh, Amazon links, if you're kind enough to click on those, uh, it helps me uh, uh, get McDonald's once in a while. If you click on those, it doesn't cost you anything more. It's just a portal and all that stuff. So thank you. Until next time that I have more to talk about. I swear to God, it won't be as long as this, uh, unless you liked it this long, in which case I'll make it longer. I'm Mark. I'm the Cinemaniac, and I'll see you when I have something else that's coming soon.